We're here at Tommy Cassidy's service station and we're looking northwards. That's the northern side of the border and we turn around and that's that's into the southern side. And you can see where the concrete changes here and the, the, the tarmac on the southern side is about a foot or about a yard further in than on the northern side. So that shows how the border manifests itself here. And we have Tommy Cassidy, the proprietor, and the store here in the background. Tommy's just walking towards the store, which we were talking about earlier on there. But two thirds of it in the south and one third in the north. And as you walk in here, Tommy, you're going to explain to me the reality of the situation. The reality is that where I'm standing now, we're in Northern Ireland. Yeah. The products that you can see behind me are in Northern Ireland. As we walk across here, all products to my left is in Northern Ireland. When I cross over here now, I'm now in the Republic of Ireland. Yeah. And as we walk towards the building, within the building, you will be able to see the products where they are stored. Yeah. Some north and some south. Yeah. So if we go inside, it will be easy to see products from Lakeland Dairies. So we have fe feedstuffs here uh, from Lakeland Dairies, and I presume this is in the southern side here, Tommy. Lakeland Dairies products, as you can see here, where we stand at the moment is in the Republic of Ireland. As we proceed down through the building, We are now in Northern Ireland. Yeah. And for the na and to the naked eye, the the products uh, and uh, what's on the stock here hasn't changed, or the the shed looks the same to me. Oh, the shed is the same. It is the there same. Is, it actually is the same. Yeah. There is no. This is the borderline. Right through the shed. Yeah. So there really is that all products that are in this side here are. Placed in Northern Ireland. In Northern Ireland, including the wheelbarrow. I used to hear jokes years ago about guys smuggling wheelbarrows, and there was all sorts of funny jokes I heard about boys uh, smuggling bicycles, and they used to bring up a pound of water, and you'd go down cycling every day. And it was years later the customs realised it was bicycles they were smuggling. That is correct. So, have you any funny story yourself you could relate about smuggling, Tommy? We would have been, uh, look, we're 27 years here, we would have seen a lot of products that would have been. Uh, moved on the border, including, I suppose, the biggest one uh, would have been spirits and beer. Yeah. And uh, I suppose there would have been a lot of strange stories about how they were moved and when they were moved and where they were moved to. Uh, personally, myself, I would have been uh, got involved in selling alcohol in Northern Ireland. Right. And it was all gone to the south of Ireland. And on occasions, the revenue commissioners would have uh, approached me and would have taken some of this from me. Right. In the past. Yeah. Uh, and that was the reality of the situation when there were customs and revenue, and the the border was implement, implemented at that time. Yeah, the border was there, and that, you know, it, it was it, it was there for people to make the best possible use they could of it. Yeah. And people living on the border, from the agricultural products right through to boots and shoes and. Like Enniskillen was a fantastic uh, uh, marketing town. That was, yeah. you know, one of the better towns in Northern Ireland. Actually, you had Sligo, Donegal, Fermanagh. Yeah, then you had Cavan, Leitrim. All people arrived in, in, in Fermanagh to do their shopping. And if we go for a walk back out, Tommy, and we'll just see your service station and how the reality is of day-to-day -day living here uh, on a service station and, and facility that actually straddles the border, Tommy, and if there were a hard border and that type of infrastructure or Brexit, how, how would it manifest itself? We're just walking back out and you can see your street here and people moving with forklifts and trucks and everything. There's no distinguishable marks here about where the border is, Tommy. Absolutely, there is, there is, there is no markings at all for the border here. There never has been on, on, on this side of Fermanagh and Cavan right through until you arrive at Ahalane where the river is. Yeah. The rest of the border along here has been no markings. There isn't any markings today. And that's been the, that's been the way for the last, uh, from the border was set up. 
And finally, Tom, as the snow comes down here on this Thursday morning in January, uh, the people here are resilient, and no matter what happens, you get on with living. We will get on with living irrespective of what takes place. We are going to have to continue and stay on in business here. Uh, maybe price differentials with regards to euro and the sterling may be a factor, but personally I can't envisage any tariffs uh, being imposed on products moving from north to south. If we take some of the products we spoke about, animal feeds, uh, are, they, are they going to impose tariffs? And if they do, who's going to, who's going to be here to man whether I sell a bag of meal to a guy from Derry Lynn or whether he's from Ballyconnell? Tommy Cassidy, thanks for your enlightening interview today. Thank you.